In my last video, you saw me capture this. Is it a sphere, a cube, hexagon? Don't really know, but we're going to explore that. This is my hexagon hypothesis. So uh, all of the footage that you see here is taken from last month and this month. That's February and March 2016. Now, this is the first time I saw the hexagon. And I didn't really zoom in or put any filters on, which I'm going to do for you now. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the apparent shape of it. So it's got well-defined corners. It's got fairly straight lines. And uh, a hexagon superimposes pretty neatly on it. Most of all, it accounts for some of the irregularity that we saw in an earlier video. Welcome back viewers, it's March 1st, 2016. This is all footage from the same date. Should have either been a circle or an elliptical shape aligned with the way the clouds are oriented. Because light isn't arbitrarily bent. Distortion moves light corresponding to the clouds shape. So we're going to zoom in here. And you can see the way that the clouds are is horizontal. And if you look closely at where the arrows are pointing, and I'll zoom in here, you can see that the light does in fact behave that way. But what is bending it to the entire larger oval shape? Well, it turns out it wasn't bending. It was angled. Think of a hexagon tilting away from you. And you'll see that it turns into kind of an elliptical shape, at least an oblong one. So, based on appearance, it would seem that at least the hexagon is a better guess than the circle. But we don't have a lot of information saying that the hexagon is any better than a cube because we can't get close to it. So the next clip we're going to examine the issue of a hexagon versus a cube. This is also footage that you've seen before, but again I'm going to do a close-up and filter on it. And we're going to take a look at the rays of light emanating from it, specifically the angles of the rays of light. We're going to look at the strongest rays and see whether they're consistent more with the cube or with the hexagon. You'll notice that I numbered them 1 through 4, and 4 wasn't particularly strong, but I included it because there's lens flare moving along that line, so we know that it's there. It's consistent with the hexagon, but not quite consistent with the cube, because if you draw the lines out from a cube in a three-dimensional fashion, you'll see that they're just slightly off. Okay, you're probably saying, but wait, how can we just disregard the sphere or the circle? The sun's in space and there's gravity out there. Well, gravity doesn't make cubic or hexagonal objects, it makes spheroid objects. Well, I don't really think it is in space. Remember this part? This is from Monday, February 29th, 2016. Leap day from San Francisco. Now, I need to take a step back and go back to physics a bit. If you remember, every color of light has a particular wavelength. And when you have all of one type of color, you're able to have a laser light. That's coherent light. And then you have incoherent light, which is a jumble of different wavelengths. And because the waves crash into each other, the light diffuses over a certain amount of distance. You can think about it like a flashlight. So which one is our sun? Well, it's a big flashlight. And we know that because if we hold a prism up to the sun's rays, we can get a rainbow out of it. So it's not all made out of one light. Now, in examining the footage here, what struck me as interesting is at several points, the sun looks like it is pinpointed. Not just in the normal perspective sense that you can only see it shining behind some clouds because of where you stand, but rather it looks as if it is made of coherent light or that the flashlight effect is coming from a much closer distance. I've added here some additional footage showing the same kind of phenomenon. Uh, take a look at the distance at which the solar object would have to be if it was shining a spot about that size. Now, I explain why it's not believable. Let me show you. From 93 million miles away, this beast 
using only incoherent light is lighting up just this portion? That seems difficult to believe. What are the implications of this? Well, without getting into all of that, I will just say that whatever we're observing is not consistent with what we're told about the sun. Now, has it always been this way? I don't think so, but it's really difficult to say. So, am I really suggesting that we're living under an artificial sun? Yeah, I am. And the patents show something worth looking at. So I did a simple patent search, and I gotta thank my viewers here because they clued me into the existence of a number of these patents. Well, as it turns out, there are thousands, thousands of solar simulators, sometimes called sunlight simulators out there. And this has moved beyond the point of a theoretical idea and into the realm of practical application, having been tested on solar panels and possibly also us. What's interesting is that virtually all of them suggest using a hexagonal shape or hexagonal array. And that's exactly what we're seeing. So take a look at some of these attached photos and figures from the United States Patent Office. This one in particular is interesting. A lot of them describe it as a honeycomb. You might see that language in there. Some of them use circles arranged in a hexagonal array. There are a few items of note, including one that was owned by a number of large banks, strangely, and another one that was owned by NASA. Now, the earliest one I could find was in 1961, I believe it was filed, and publication was in 1966. This one is one that has an image that might help us figure another phenomenon out. It's something that everybody who has seen my work understands. It's the little white sun. What would a little white sun be doing there as well? Well, I think we can account for it because based on what NASA has, at least what they have been assigned in the patent office, based on a minor deficiency in the design, there would be a missing hole in the middle from the full complete solar simulation because light coming up the shaft and reflecting off the mirror into the final parabola where the hexagon is and shooting out toward us. There'd be a little missing hole because that's where the shaft of light would come up. So what they did as a countermeasure is they made a separate mini parabola and used a xenon arc lamp to project light outward. But a xenon lamp doesn't have the same spectra as the sun and would appear whiter, not unlike the headlights of luxury cars. So that pretty well explains why there might be a smaller white sun always near the larger array. One last important thing, a heartfelt thanks to my viewers and positive commenters. If I'm correct on this hypothesis, this hexagon hypothesis, I share all credit with you. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Bye.